think we need that part anymore. I'm going to go ahead and save this layout um, as preview. So I'm going to want to come back to this at some point, and I'm <laughs> pretty confident I'm going to mess up uh, and just nuke this if I'm not careful. So let's zip out over here, and now we've got something that's beginning to look uh, kind of interesting, right? So we've got our one, two, three, four channels. All that is driven by these um, project components that just have a remap top in them. So we've got a nice, efficient kind of approach here. But I want to be able to actually use this UI. And you know we could build a UI for this with like a select component to drive some of this. But I need a few other elements. I need to be able to swap this around. OK, I need that. Um, and then I need to be able to see this, or I, at least I would like to be able to see this particular channel that I'm working with update over here. So you guessed it, we'll need one more select. Plug this in here. I'm going to borrow this path for right now and drop that in there so we have at least something. I'm going to call this, let's call it select for stoner. Or let's call it select for UI. That's probably more generic. OK. How are we going to make this work? Well. We are going to first use one of my favorite little things that I did. It's taken me an embarrassingly long amount of time to really deeply understand. Uh, and that is uh, the ability to use decorators in Python to do some really tricksy little bits and pieces for us. Because what I want, oh my goodness, what I would love to have is I would love for this base calibration, I'd love for this goober up here to have a little drop down menu, right? I do a customized component, settings, and I'd love to have a parameter that was, say, called uh, calibration. Or maybe it's called a channel. Maybe it's on the calibration page. Calibration, cal, calibration. So add that page. I would like this to be a menu, please. Excellent. <sighs> OK. Well, so I could go ahead and dump in the names that I want for all these channels and the labels that I want for all these channels in here. But it means that if any of that changes, or if I add a channel or delete a channel, <sighs> I've got to set myself to the work of then updating this parameter. And what I want, oh my goodness, is I would love for that to update itself. How can we get there? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to write a little Python module for that. So let's grab a little text data roo, and I'm going to call this menu mod or menu label mod for module. I'm going to go ahead and use Sublime for this. So I'm just going to be happier using a text editor. Okay. So what, what's going on exactly? So there is a really lovely, beautiful post um, that, oh boy, got to rack my little brain circuitry um, to figure out where this came from. I know it came from the Touch Designer forum. And what that looks like is it looks like this real slick little handy dandy goober. Uh, that essentially uh, what it does for us is, menu from dat, um, is it allows us to actually pull uh, from a table dat a name and label and then populate one of these UIs, right? That is really so swanky. I want to do something similar, only rather than using a table dat to get there, I would love to be able to do something like, say, use a find children call for that. OK, how, how are we going to get there? Well, we have to do a little bit of Python, Python foo. We have to practice a little bit. And to do that, we're going to make a class first. I'm going to call mine menu items. And then we've got the usual suspects. We need an init statement. 
I'm going to pass in the operator this is coming from, and then I'm going to also pass in a base string. We're going to see what we're going to do with that in just one moment. Uh, self, all right, so my operator is me, great, self. My base string is my base string, the thing that came right on here, in here. And then I'm gonna make one other goodie called self wildcard name. And that's what I wanna do with this is I'm actually gonna use this base string and I just wanna append an asterisk to the end of it. Because I'm gonna use that with some pattern matching to be able to find a bunch of operators. All right, let's format that, format. And I'm gonna pass in my base string to this. All right, so base string goes in, and what I get out is my base string plus a little asterisk. Okay, that's all the good stuff I've gotta do in my init. I wanna go ahead next, and I want to write a method called getOps. And what I'm up to here is I wanna use this to return a set of operators that I have found that match a set of conditions. So my target operators that I want to give back are going to be, I'm going to look at my op, right? This, that happens to be this goober up here, self my op. I want to find children, find children, okay. The type for this is a base comp. The depth in my network, it's only going to be one. And the name I'm going to use for this is myself wildcard name. All right, so we'll see, we'll see what we're up to there in just a moment. And then I'm going to return that. I'm going to return this set of target ops. All right, so far so good. Great, great, great. I love it. Okay, now, well, before we get too far along here, let's see if we can actually see what's going on with that in action. Let's use an eval dot. And we should be able to use something like me.mod.menuLabel mod, okay, and I want menu items. I need to pass in, I said me, but in this case I'm going to pass in my parent, I'm going to pass in a touch designer operator, so parent, and then I would like to get back, right, what I want to want to get from this is I want to get all of this, them are those there uh, target ops, right? Now, I happen to already have set up over here, right? So, base calibration, that's the, we could kind of assume all of this stuff is what I want to match, okay? So, let's go ahead and borrow this. Yoink! Alrighty dighty. So, base calibration is my starting string. Okay, great. So far, so good. And then if I want to say get back from this, my get ops call. All right, see? So there I've got a list, chan one, two, three, four, of all of these operators. Okay, that, that sure is swell, Matt. I'm so glad for us. Why does that matter? <laughs> uh, and in order for that to matter, we gotta take, we have to write just a little bit more Python. We gotta go just one step further. So now we're gonna do something like, I want my menu labels. Now, this is really important. Our, our choice in syntax, our choice in name here is important because what we need to do is if we go ahead and take a look at our uh, customized component here, we can see that we our properties menu names and menu labels, we need to match those. That's the idea. Because what I can do with this menu source is I can point at a Python object that has those properties, and then I would get back exactly the things that I want. Uh, say that one more time, Matt. Well, let's say that menu labels are what I want to dump right in here. Okay, great. So we could think that our menu labels are going to be, we're going to write a little list comprehension for this goober. I want each operator, and I want each ops.name, 
And I want that. I want square brackets. And I want to go the len of self. Uh, I think I want my wild card name. Yeah, I think I want that. The length of that string. Okay. So I want I want to grab the name from each one of these operators. Okay, great. For each op in self get ops. Okay. <laughs> Return menu labels. Whoa. What does this even mean? What have we done? All right, let's check over here, right? Hopefully what I should see if I dump in menu labels here, as I should see chan one, two, three, four, which happens to match, right? Chan one, two, three, four. What kind of sorcery is this? Okay, well, let's pull apart what's going on here. Okay, so first a list comprehension is essentially just a way of returning a list uh, or running a for loop, iterating a for loop across an array. So we're gonna build a list right away out of something. Now, our target ops already happen to be in a list, so that's great. We're doing a kind of uh, compound operation in some ways here. So I wanna go through all of these operators. I want to return from that this first part. So this is uh, what I'm actually getting out of this. And what that happens to be is each op, right? So we go through each one of these operators. I wanna get this name. And then this little bit here in the brackets means I only want to start returning a name starting at the length of this business, right? So that happens to be all of this input base string, right? Base calibration plus that wild, wild, um, wild card addition, which is a stand-in for that little underscore, which means that the, the names that we get out of this are starting right from here to the end, okay? And I wanna do that across each operator, and I wanna do all of that in this self get ops, which calls this function right above it. Okay, whew, yowza. So that's slick, I like that. What if I could also say, get some menu names, okay? This is gonna be much easier because this time I just want my each operator dot path. I wanna have the absolute path for each one of these ops. Come back here, Python, where'd you go? And this is gonna be called menu names. We gotta make sure menu names is menu names here. We could put all this on one line if we wanted to. It's, you know, this is syntactic choice. Um, your call. You do you, boo. Okay. How can we go one step further? Well, we can go one step further by using a decorator. This app property goodness is going to let us make this thing a property out the gate for us. It's a little decorator. So now rather than having to go through the business of say writing another function that then sets some members up here to be these things we can instead uh oh come over here and we should be able to get out of this just menu labels right so now we're, we don't even have to do, have to do a function call instead we've just got a little decorator goodness set up here. So we can get our labels. We can also get our names, right? There's our paths. <laughs> Still not totally sure why I care about that yet. And the reason we care about this is we're gonna take now this handy little expression we wrote. Just so we can see this from the scratch, I'm gonna open up the customized component here and then my menu source, now I'm gonna drop that whole shenanigan right in here. Okay, so me.mod, my module called menu label mod, great, menu items is the class name. I'm gonna pass into it, instead of parent, 
I'm going to pass into it me, right? I'm going to pass in this, this here object. Base underscore calibration, that's still my base string. And I don't need this menu names business anymore because now, voila, bada bing, bada boom, I've got all of these channel names added here for me right away. We should also see that if we, let's go ahead and leave this parameters goober up here. Let's dive inside. Let's make a copy. So we can imagine we added another channel, right? We're up to five now. Look at this. Isn't this swell? Our menu updated with us. Holy schmoly. That is sure awfully slick and exciting. Okay. That's, you know, a handy little uh, exciting look at uh, how we can take advantage of decorators uh, to do some kind of slick stuff for us, a different way to use classes. Uh, this technique is useful in lots of different ways. You can use a similar kind of approach to get back the contents of a, uh, a dat for your labels and names. Uh, this find children technique, I think, is another kind of interesting exploration of that same idea, just albeit in a slightly different way.